Hi, everyone. I am Candice Porter. And today I want to talk a little bit about creating a Smartsheet template. Now, some reasons that you might want to use a Smartsheet template for project management. Let's say that we have standardized our project management processes within our organization or even our department or just team. And we want everyone to go through the same steps as we initiate a new project. So maybe we have already created a project plan and we have it stored out in Smartsheet. And every time we kick off a new project, we want people to go in there and use that same template without maybe having to save it as a new file or possibly delete some of the data that is currently stored in there. This is really simple as far as how you can create a Smartsheet template. There are a few little things though that you'll want to know if you're going to go through this, and I'll point those out along the way. Again, I am Candace Porter, and if you have not had the opportunity, I would love it if you can subscribe to this channel. You can do so by clicking on the little bell below. I talk pretty much exclusively about project management and a lot about Smartsheet, Asana, other tools that are used. But my goal is to set you up for success as a project manager, whether you have been managing projects for a long time or if you're relatively new. Here is a project plan that I have created and I have out there in a workspace within Smartsheet. Now, again, let's say we've standardized our project management practices and we want everyone to have a very similar project schedule as they move throughout. So you'll see here, we've got an at-risk column. We've got a column for the task name. And you'll see that we have it broken up by phases here. So initiation, planning, execution, and close. So we really want every single project to have a project charter, a stakeholder register. As we move into the planning phase, we have a project management plan that we want everyone to create. It's divided into sections. Um, once that's approved, people can go ahead and get off and running by going into the execution phase. We want each deliverable to be broken down by activity or task. And that way we know exactly when things need accomplished. In the close phase, we wanna make sure that people are capturing those lessons learned and that we are archiving all documents. Now, of course, there may be additional things that are in here, but let's say this is the bare minimum that we want people to do with the project. We want every project to have a project status column. So is it not started? Is it completed? We want to know who is assigned to each of the tasks. We want to know what allocation percentage. So if Candace Porter is working on section one of the project management plan, how much am I allocated? Is it 25%? Is it 50%? Is it 100%? And that's important because we may need more days if I'm only allocated at 25%. So we've got a start date, an end date, our duration, our predecessors, which are quite important, and then what percent is completed of this particular line item. I have a whole video on how to set up a project plan in Smartsheet. It's roughly an hour long. So if you are looking for something that's gonna give you a little bit more detail, please check out that video. So let's say we have this set up exactly how we want it, and we now want to save it as a template. This is quite simple. Again, there's a few little things that you're going to need to think about, however. I'm going to go up to file here in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to click on it, and you're going to see down here in this second section where it says save as template. I'm going to click on that 
and it says your sheet has unsaved changes. You can save the sheet as a template without your unsaved changes or cancel and save your changes. So that's one thing that you really wanna keep in mind. Make sure that when you go to save it as a template, that everything's up to date. So I'm gonna cancel. I'm going to click save. Now I'm gonna go back in, save as a template. And you can name the template whatever you want. So I'm going to call this new project template. There's a couple of drop downs here that a lot of times it just be easy to type in the name of it and click save. But the other things that you want to think about, if you click next to automated workflow and alert options, take a look at this. It's going to ask you some questions. So do you want to retain the recipients and permission settings? Now, in this particular template, I did not have anyone in the assigned column. So in this assigned to column, I did not have anyone's name listed. But if I did, then that would also save the recipients. So it would save the people that were listed in that column. Now, for workflows that copy or move rows to other sheets, do we want the template to also copy or move rows to other sheets, or do we not want that to happen? Now, that's important. So if we select preserve destination, then this is going to continue to feed into those locations. If we click don't preserve destination, disable workflow, then it'll no longer be an option here. So go ahead and think through that. Now, if you have a template and every time a new project is kicking off, someone's going to be going out there and grabbing it, you probably don't want to include recipients and permission settings when we're talking about automated workflow. So if I'm a project manager and I created this template and a lot of other project managers are going to be using it in the future, and I have the actual workflow set up in this template so that every time something is updated by a team member, I get notified, then I don't want that to happen when other project managers are going to be using this. So what I would do, I would uncheck that. I do not want the automated workflows and alerts to come to me every time a project manager makes a copy of that. Now, this is going to just be your preferences and how you and your team will be using it, but keep that in mind. Now, once I disabled that, you'll see it doesn't give me an option here for workflows that copy or move rows into other sheets. It disables all of it at the same time. So we're gonna say no to that. And then data and formatting options. So this is going to give me some additional options here. So sheet data and formatting. Do I want to save the comments, attachments, cell links and cross sheet references, sheet hyperlinks, shared sheet filters, and forms? So for example, if on row four, here where it says project charter, if I had an actual project charter template uploaded on that row and in the comments, I had instructions on how to use that for future project managers. I would definitely want to make sure that that is being included when I create the template. So do you want all comments, attachments, cell links, and cross sheet references, sheet hyperlinks, shared sheet filters, and forms? So it's just going to depend on how you have your uh, original sheet kind of set up and if you want it to be preserved. So I'm going to say yes to all of this. And now I've got new project template. I'm going to click save. We now have the template saved and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, so I am back in the workspace that I was working within when I created the template. Now, what we originally looked at was where it says smart sheet rocks. That was the project plan that I was walking you through. And that is what I saved as the template. You are now going to see up here where it says new project template, and it looks a little bit different. You see that it's white with some boxes around it, new project template. 
that is now where the template lives. So a couple of things that I need you to think about here. You can't actually update a project template as things change. So let's say that your project sponsor comes to you and says, you know what, we need one more step for project initiation. I want you to have a line item where it needs to be presented to a steering committee and we approve every single project. Okay, so maybe we need to present the project charter after that's completed and then we have kind of a decision point in there. Well, I can't go in and actually update the new project template. You'll see when I open it, it simply gives me an option to use template. So if I click on use template here, it's going to ask me to save it. So I'll name it here and save it in whatever workspace that we're going to be using it in. The actual way to update a project template, you need to go back to kind of the source of truth. So you need to go back to the original sheet that it was based upon. So I'm gonna go back into Smart Sheet Rocks here and I would need to add a line item here where it says, you know, present to steering committee for approval. And we could build that in as a new line item that we would want that to happen after we had the project charter completed. Add in some of my dependencies here. And okay, everything now, it's all at 0%. It's squared away now. We've got all of our dates in here. I'm going to click save. This is our new kind of source of truth. I now need to file, save as template, and I need to rename that. So new project template, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm gonna save it in this same workspace. I'm gonna make sure that my automated workflows, I'm gonna turn those off. I'm going to make sure that these are all turned on for the data and formatting options. Click save. And now I'm going to go back and you'll see that there are two versions of the new project template. So two versions of the new project template. And I can just delete the old one. And this is the new project template. A couple of other things that you need to know in order for someone to use this new project template, they have to have access to the workspace. So right now I'm the owner, I'm the only one that have access there. And so I'm the only one that can actually access that new project template. What you can do, however, is drag it into a different workspace. So if you want to have a shared workspace, so everyone on your team is shared to one workspace and it says templates. So that's where you're gonna store all of your templates. Then you can make sure that you drag this into that shared workspace um, by workspace name, and then people will be able to access it and use it. Be mindful of what your source of truth file is because again, that's going to be how you update that template in the future. Thank you so much for joining me today and learning about creating a smart sheet template. Again, a few things to think about. Whatever document, whatever sheet you're using to create the template, that's going to remain your source of truth. And so you need to make sure that you go back into that document, make any updates or changes, and then resave that as a template. Wherever you are storing that template, it needs to be accessible by others if they need to have access to use it. So again, if you just store it in a workspace that only you have access to, then they're not gonna be able to use that template. So be mindful about that. Also be mindful when you're creating the template, do you want the workflows and notifications to stay in place? 
If so, you can go ahead and keep that turned on. If not, make sure you turn them off. Or if you're on the notifications of the sheet that you're turning into a template, then in the future, you will also be on the notifications for anything that someone's doing with the template. So that is just good food for thought. My name is Candace Porter. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And check out this other video if you want to know a little bit more about how to create a project schedule from scratch. Again, this video is about 60 minutes. It kind of is soup to nuts of everything that you need to know. And I hope to see you again in the near future. Have a great day.